Hello and welcome to the big picture. Much has been said and written about black money, money laundering, role of Swiss banks and other tax havens across the world and how it has affected the Indian economy. There has also been much talk about a parallel economy within the country itself. But the sensational revelations by CobraPost.com on an online website yesterday about how the private banks in this country are brazenly involved in widespread money laundering to slash to stash black money and convert them to white has shocked the country. Dozens of HDFC, ICICI and Axis Bank branches stung by Cobra Post have exposed how endemic this problem is. However, it's quite surprising that the issue has not got the kind of response it should have, with subdued reactions from the political class and hackneyed responses from the banks itself, as well as the Reserve Bank of India. The role of the RBI as a regulator of these banks Various other key departments like the Income Tax, Enforcement Directorate, Directorate of Revenue Intelligence, among others, have come to question following this sting operation. Where does the problem lie and who are all responsible for it? What about the role of the top management of these banks? Will this expose lead to better regulation? We will discuss all this today with Anirudh Behel, former editor, sorry, founder editor of CobraPost.com, Professor Aman Agarwal, Vice Chairman, Institute of Finance, Sudhir Chandra, Sudhir, okay, we, are, we will be joined by others soon. Let me come to um, Anirudh first. Anirudh, 24 hours, or a little over 36 hours now since, that, since these revelations. You think that the kind of responses which, which, which uh, you have got or the, or the issue has got in these 36 hours, you're, you're satisfied with it? Well, you see, I was very surprised, most of all, by the finance minister, Mr. Jidamram's statement that he had talked to the chairman of the so-called three banks, two out of two three, banks. two banks, and one of them was traveling apparently, and they had assured him that they are all as well. I mean, that's, I mean, I don't know, it was such a comic statement. I mean, do you really call up, uh, call up the perpetrators of the people who had such sort of syndicates who are money laundering and ask them like, have you, have you, is it all okay? I mean, <laughs> of course they will say it is okay. And I'm also surprised that, 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 I mean, the kind of laws that they have violated, whether it is FEMA or whether it is the income tax law, the banking act, the money laundering, uh, KYC norms. I mean, it's the government of India making those KYC norms. It is not me or you or the people on the street. And if these private banks are not doing uh, following those things, then they should be held accountable. I mean, Absolutely. we are not a banana republic after all. And I'm very surprised that the parliament did not raise up this issue today. I mean, does black money, does that concern them? Does illegitimate there money floating around? Huge, there was a huge, uh, you know, uproar in the parliament some, some sessions back. S parliament was held up on this black money issue and all these things. But as you said, it's surprising it didn't come up today. I'll, I'll come back to you, but let me uh, get Mr. Sudhir Chandra, former chairman of the Central Board of Direct Taxes is, is with us. Uh, Mr. Sudhir Chandra, uh, you know, this, this whole operation which you must have seen yesterday and read about it today, d does it surprise you? You know, firstly, uh, we have a unit which is under the Ministry of Finance. Right. FIU, we call it, FIU India. So whatever transactions are there in the banks. Your FIU so is... One is... Mr. Chandra, Cash is deposited. Sorry, Mr. Chandra, FIU is Financial Intelligence Unit. Is that what you say? Ha, please. G. Okay. G, G, G. Bilkul. Okay. This is Financial Intelligence Unit under, under Ministry of Finance, Revenue Secretary. So it reports all bank transactions which are suspicious in nature. Right. Even deposit of 5,000, 5,000 in a slew of companies, firms, may appear to be suspicious and many times it is reported by FIU India. Right. And secondly, the moment cash deposit in a bank account exceeds 10 lakhs, it becomes mandatory for FIU India to report it. Right. So, in these circumstances, here? I mean, uh, it is really strange how can transactions can escape the attention of Ministry of Finance or CBDT. So are you, are you trying to say, Mr. Chandra, that you know, these uh, such transactions don't take place? Or are you saying that, are, 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 are you surprised that such transactions are taking place and it, it has not come to the notice of the FIU or the Finance Ministry or the, uh, or the other departments? No, I am saying neither. 
they must be taking place but if they take place they do come in the notice of FIU India and then they forward it to the concerned department. In majority of cases they come to CBDT and CBDT does take action. Okay, but, uh, but Mr. Chandra the question is this, you know are you surprised that you know if you, are, you, you must have st seen the sting operation, you must have seen the number of people that, that, that the journalists from Cobra Post went and spoke to it from various branches of various of, uh, of these uh, private banks. Are you surprised that, you know, it, it is... It is it, yeah, truthfully, Nikam Saab, yes. truthfully, I haven't seen it. I have read it. Okay, you have read it. But, you know, does it, does, does it not surprise you that, you know, these people are so easily engaged in conversations of how to launder black money, how to convert black money into white? Is this, is this something, a phenomena which you think is happening only in private banks? Or do you think that these are happening uh, in, in other banks also? No. Now, to be truthful, yes. uh, to be truthful, it is difficult to say it is happening because what I have read in the newspapers yes. that somebody was uh, persuading, rather uh, conversing uh, 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 that his bank can do this, do this, do this. Whether such a transaction has actually taken place. Transactions have not taken place. It's not the question of transaction taking place or not. That these banks are willing to do this it's yes. itself, isn't it, isn't it a matter of concern? No, I am, I am so happy the way you have framed your question. Yes, yes, please continue. And individual's involvement or maybe two, three individual's involvement, according to my truthful opinion, may not be taken as the, uh, as the action of the bank or the chairman. This is what I personally feel. So and you really, were two, three, two, three two, individuals. Three First of all, it wasn't two, three people, individuals. Yeah. There, there were dozens and dozens and dozens. Secondly, let me inform Mr. Chandra that uh, his original thing that over 10 lakhs will be reported, these very officials of the banks ranging from like the branch manager level to territory manager to um, cluster head, etc., etc., were talking about the system of how to break up this 10 lakhs into multiple accounts, exactly. how to break up these amounts so that it doesn't attract, the no, it doesn't lead to some reporting to income tax, etc., etc. So they are trying to, they are beating the system and they right. are telling you how they will do it. The Secondly, radar, the radar catches. At 10 that's lakhs. right. So that's you, right. And you even put the pan card nine and a half lakhs, and you're not. They are saying pan card level fifty thousand. Now, uske niche daliye. So and break it up multiply. Put it in Benami accounts. Put it in, get a overdraft from cooperatives. Get a DD from somewhere else, etc., etc. Secondly, it is such an endemic culture of money laundering that in cold calls, this journalist is going there and pretending that he's fronting for some imaginary politician and saying that politician wants to launder his cash and he's giving a red carpet treatment, they are treating with masala dosas, tea, coffee, you know, we have to sort of get this and they are then saying the, pro and just my last point, this whole thing that no transaction happened is so much bogus because those, each one of them is telling that he has done this in the past and he's giving... And it's all on camera. It's on camera and he's giving specific instances of how he, where, with whom he has done it and the amounts he has done it, he or she has done it okay. with. Okay. We are, we are now joined in by Hardayal Singh, former Additional Secretary, Central Vigilance Commission and an Ombudsman in the Income Tax Department. Mr. Singh, welcome. Mr. Singh, you have been, uh, I hope you have heard what, is, uh, what has been said so far. Anyway, my question to you is, are you surprised by this, by what yes, you have I seen? Could, I, could, I could hear, yes. Okay, Mr. Singh, are you surprised by what you have seen and heard in the last 24 hours, uh, the CobraPost.com, and you think this is something which you, you, you have seen it yourself, or you think uh, this is something which is new to you? Look, it's not new to me. When I was in the Central Vigilance Commission, right. we dealt with the aftermath of the Harshad Mehta scam. Right. And we found at that time that there were a number of market practices which were violative of the Negotiable Instruments Act. Uh, again, I was not surprised even in 2008 when the subprime crisis broke out in the United States where again a lot of banks were involved in, uh, what should I say, sub-moral uh, sub practices. Sub-moral, okay. Uh, 
practices of sub sub moral morality okay and all of these leave a very sour taste in your mouth right but yet you have to ask the question yes that if these practices are widespread right two questions arise right. first why do these things happen and secondly exactly what can be done about them right mr mr we'll come as to that as far as the first question is concerned yes yes please continue yes mr. please yes please no no mr Sa uh, mr singh you please talk about the first thing we'll come to the second part later yeah why do these things happen you see banks have a fiduciary capacity they are charged with certain responsibility under the laws of the under the banking laws of the land yet at the same time they are asked to meet short term goals by their employers by the managements of banks and many of many banks fall into the temptation of trying to achieve these goals at the expense of the laws of the land in right. other words short term goals trump long term objectives okay okay you, you mr singh i'll it come is back it's important for banks mr singh i'll come in back order to order to maintain their credibility right. that that they should not be doing this sort of thing okay okay mr singh please stay on i'll come back to you uh, mr aman aman agarwal you you think these kind of practices is is inbuilt into in, into the system or do you think these these are stray cases no i'm happy that this kind of a report has come forth you know as an institution we have been working on money laundering for almost 24 25 years now and some of the studies have made path breaking structures the money laundering act is because of fast kyc norms worldwide introduced by the world bank the rbi the adb was because of us and then they have not been understood in the real sense what is to be done you see the problem here is that it is not that there is something new which has happened it has been happening in the banking industry not only in india but even worldwide for a long time if you really look at the new term earlier it was the investment bankers who were doing this kind of an act or the investment banking framework where it was done now it is a wealth management wing which does it if you really look at singapore itself it has become the switzerland of the east and almost all banks financial institutions and banks which have operations in singapore have nothing else but wealth management divisions they right. do not do corporate banking they do not do retail banking the only thing they do is wealth management and most of these wealth management departments of almost all banks around the world including india are nothing else but actually doing this kind of an act and money that, laundering money laundering act clear cut money laundering act and this is where the government of india needs to take an act through the fiu fiu unfortunately does not have the the enforcement capabilities they have to report to the director enforcement to get it enforced or to agencies like cbdt to get it enforced now when institutions of repute like the ones which have been coming out in the study yesterday come into picture then some of the government agencies also take a back step to come in forward and do transactions i remember about a year back state bank of india it came in the front page news that a poor man's bank account they showed a statement that he got crores of rupees into exactly. his account and within 2 3 days this amount money was gone out it came as a picture in the front page of the times of india and and, and this revelation yesterday in the in in, in their operation very clearly clearly this. showed this kind of similar so that these these people are telling that you know you can put money in in in, in somebody's account and then remove it and, and this is not one case there are multiple cases of this kind of nature which have been there with both state banks private banks and other banks as so, well so you are trying to you, what you are saying this, this is not just a problem with the private banks it's a, it, it, you can it is you something can with the banking happening. industry it's in the banking industry in the banking industry the public sector bank correct and the reserve bank of india needs to take a, a very strong step on this particular aspect the kyc norms when introduced in 2004 after suggestions were not introduced we were interview, interviewed again by international agencies and and uh, and uh, news agencies then we again said that the rbi has not forcefully done it then they forced the banks to again follow them it is only in words in terms of paperwork know your customer as scheme was to really know your customer yes. what is the customer there is, there what is does he no, get his income source and so on so cross checking there is no cross checking there is no need or want to know the customer i go to the bank they'll give me a form to fill Correct. kyc form Correct. i fill it they accept it correct there is no cross checking no cross checking secondly they'll ask you for the same documents again and again yes. and when you write to them that what happened to the previous document submitted they have no response to do they say let, let me let me let me get uh, mr chandra on, on this mr chandra isn't this a problem which you think you know has created all this 
uh, you know, loopholes for, for banks to be uh, behaving like this, as Mr. Agarwal was pointing out, all these banks are just wealth management. They do wealth no, management. If, if they have been doing this and not reporting, somehow managing the transactions in a circuitous way so that they don't have to report those transactions under FIU, then it is a very serious thing. No, but the question, uh, Mr. Mr. Chandra. Prior to becoming chairman, I was yes. member investigation. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay, please continue. Uh, and you see, I was member investigation. All the transactions were reported by FIU India to the CBDT, in turn, mem member investigation. And I have personally seen that in many cases, even in small, small transactions, every month deposit of, say, 5,000 rupees but in 100 accounts. Yes. So the banks themselves used to club these transactions and report as suspicious transactions. So no, but, no, no. FIU's mandate is to no, report no, Mr. Mr. Chandra, two kinds of transactions. No, no, Mr. Chandra, One is suspicious. <coughs> Please. Mr. Chandra, what you are saying is what should be done and what you think has been done. But there are a lot of things which these expose, cobrapost.com's expose as yesterday pointed out, which is happening which is not, which has obviously not come under the suspicion of the of, of the banks or I the banks themselves are indulging in it. What how do what do you do about it? And where so does the CB, where does the Amanji CBDT out where does the, no, Mr. Mr. Chandra, where does the CBDT come into the picture in this? Do you think the CBDT has been doing its role in the right manner? Another important thing: what is the what about the role of the RBI? No, RBI's roles, I am not in a position to comment, but CBDT has been very fastidious about following each and every transaction reported by the FIU. Okay, if the FIU reports, you will act. If the FIU doesn't report, if it doesn't come under the, uh, doesn't come to the notice of the FIU, then this, these things obviously have been going on. Let me, let me get Mr. Hardeyal Singh on this. Yes. Mr. Hardeyal, Mr. So Hardeyal, Mr. Mr. Hardeyal. It's a very, very important point. Yes. If FIU is not reporting. FIU is not reporting. Mr. Hardeyal Singh, FIUs don't report, so nobody knows these things go on merrily. Is that, is that the situation? You see, what is the extent to which these practices prevail can only be a, can only be a matter of estimate. Right. All I, can, all I can say is that we have known, we have known that they have existed and not only in India but all over the world. No, but if you have, Mr. The, Mr. Hardeyal saying, if you have known that it has existed, what is it that, what is it that when you are in the CVC, when you are a ombudsman of the income tax, when these things come to notice, what are the kind of actions which have been taken or do you think there are, there are problems in taking actions because of the, because of the extent of money involved, because of the kind of influence which the, you know, banks have on, on the government, is there a problem there? No, I don't see, I don't see any problem. When, when the offence has been reported, action has always been taken. I have particularly noticed it when I was in the CVC that more often than not, you see what, hap uh, what happens is that all these offences come to light. The moment they come to light, action has to be taken at two levels. One against the individuals concerned, second against the organization concerned. Okay. When it comes to the organizations, it's the RBI which has to levy the penalty. Right. If there's an income tax offense, it's the income tax department which has to take action. So only levying and penalty. As far as so individuals Mr. concerned are, con are no, no, Mr. concerned. No, Mr. Hardeyal Singh, so that means that penalty, some penalty, I have some, I have some statistics with me about penalty, the kind of penalties which have been imposed on, on these banks. You know, ICICI has is 30 lakh penalty. ING Vaishya Bank, 55 lakh rupees penalty. You know, these are the kind of penalties. It doesn't make any sense. Paltry. It's HSBC had to pay 1.4 billion dollars to get out of that or something close to no, that no, amount. No, no. Actually, these, the figures which you are, the, 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 the figures which you are quoting are probably not for money laundering. 
Yes. Money laundering offenses are regarded very seriously. But ha have you, as I said, have you RBI takes action, the income tax department takes action, and the CBC takes action. Okay. Uh, Amman Agarwal, do you think such any actions have been taken against... You say we have had uh, some of these cases in India also with Yes Bank, which happened initially yes. when Yes Bank had just started. After the GTV also it happened, right. they had to ask to wind up their business and then they were re-emerged. I think they, they need to they be were a very serious... The Oriental Bank of Correct. Commerce. Yeah. I think they need to be a very serious step towards this. I think uh, either, it, since it's uh, large banks we are talking about, they need to be given a serious warning on it and the chairmen need to be called for a reason as to what kind so of you, practice you, is being followed up no, with no, their bank. The question is here is, yesterday, I mean, in the last 20, 36 hours that this, this thing has been discussed, people are saying that it, these are localized things, only the local branches no, are even, involved even, in it. No, no. The top management it cannot be involved. You see, in if, if, if it comes with a private company, then the chairman is arrested and put behind bars. Exactly. Why does this rule not follow for other institutions which are even large or smaller in nature, firstly? Secondly, I think rules of the land are the same for both companies, whether it is a private company or a state-run company. Just because ICICI, HDFC or, uh, you know, the third bank has some kind of patronage from the government, so they should be treated separately, I think that kind of favoritism should not be done with, before the law, firstly. Secondly, yes. the important thing is, whether it is one branch or two branches or three branches or one transaction, money laundering is money laundering. One transaction is sufficient for CVC or for the FIU to take it forward. And a proactive role needs to be taken. Not that when some crime is taking before, before you, you keep saying, no, no, it's okay. Unless someone reports, then we will take. So this is the, what is happening with almost all circumstances. A police will only take action when someone reports a crime is taking place. Now, we need to take a proactive role. The Reserve Bank of India has required regulatory bodies within the framework which needs to work on this. And they're supposed to be more active. They should have taken out, RBI should have come out with a stand immediately, which has not taken place so far. And I think it is the lethargic structure of RBI as well as Ministry of Finance where they're not taking appropriate steps to say that we are here to stop money laundering to take place and these banks would be taken to task. Okay. Anirudh, you know, one important question which keeps cropping up, you know, I'm sure you must have heard, the, the choice of the banks which you, which you made. Three, it's, that's a very simple no, answer. No. My, 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 yeah. my question is this. Were public sector banks also under a radar? Did you think of you know, uh, doing this with the public sector banks? Because now the, the, now the argument is this happens only in private sector banks. Public sector banks, it doesn't happen. No comments on that. <laughs> That's very interesting. No comments is very interesting. Okay, that but, but answering your question, you see there are these banks, private banks, they are the leading financial institutions, right. private institutions in the country. They are so-called blue chips. Right. They get awards every month perhaps. Banker of the year, banker of this, banker of that. And you're standing and clicking your photographs for 20 years. There's nothing wrong in that. But, I mean, they are buying legitimacy through sponsorship, through, through uh, perhaps equity placements, through perhaps um, uh, loans. So who knows? So I, I am seriously, when I look at people on television and say they're a banking expert, I would really like disclaimers claiming whether they have any financial transactions with any of these banks. I would like channels to disclose the financial interest with any of these banks before they report on that. Absolutely. I mean, I think, I think you have made an interesting point, but let me get Hardial Singh again on this. Mr. Hardial Singh, I, the question which I asked... Uh, uh, Anirudh Bayal, Anirudh very enigmatically said that he has no comments about it. But is this a is this a problem you think you know which is across the board? It is not just private banks, the public sector banks. Everybody is involved in these kind of transactions. Look, I really think uh, it, that's probably true, and it's it's not as of just. Your uh, experience is current problem. No, Mr. Mr. Dayan. It's, uh, it's been there for the as Mr. Hardial. As for, uh, Mr. Hardial, my question is for you, a long time. No, no, Mr. Hardial, yes, my please. question is you have you have dealt with public sector banks, right? When you were a, when you were in the CVC, you know, when you were uh, you know looking into these aspects in the CVC, you were only dealing with public sector banks, not the private sector banks, right? That's right. That's right. And so you found the same kind of problems in the That's public sector banks also. correct. And I... Yes, we did find a lot of problems. Very often they were, did not directly relate to money laundering, but there were, there were plenty of other violations of prudential norms. Okay. Uh, so... I would like to ask a question yes. here. I yes. mean, the Banking Act makes no distinguishing, distinction, distinction between... between 
government banks and private banks. It is, say, any banking company. Right. And 46A, which very clearly the section in the Banking Act, says that the vice chairman, chairman, and light up to the officer is deemed a public servant. Right. So why don't these private banks also come under the CBC? I'm just very curious about it. Perhaps Mr. Hardyal could answer. Mr. Mr. Hardyal? That's because the jurisdiction of the Central Vigilance Commission extends only over government officers and uh, officials of public sector banks. Okay. okay. As of today, it does not extend to, uh, to private banks. Okay. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, my question is, uh, you know, now more and more, uh, you know, the, there's a new uh, move on where, where the businessmen can open banks. Correct. How will this affect? This, 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 what we have seen in the last 36 hours, you know, and how do you think the government should go about giving, they are giving licenses to the Indian business? You see, there, business there has members. been a move of business enterprises opening up banks coming yes. from Japan and making it very successful. I do not know if it's going to be really a successful venture coming out. Lots of businesses are not doing well for the last four years, not only in India, but worldwide. This will become another avenue for actually laundering up a lot of more money which comes in. We have already seen Kotak Mahindra Bank come up, which is a venture of Mahindra Group, which comes in. And it has still not been able to stabilize it in terms of both revenue growth as well as in terms of the, the, the structure which it needs to have for having a banking framework. Which is what is more important is, it is not important whether a company starts a bank or is it a, a big organization or an individual or a foreign company. The important thing is, what is the regulatory bodies which are supposed how to do? do they, how are they how regulated? Are they coming into play? How are they regulated? How are they regulated? And from what we have seen so far, the regulations are very, very weak. Very weak. And that Anirudh, is ultimately, Anirudh. I like to say one more. It yes. is ultimately harming the common man because if something happens to this bank tomorrow, of, under any circumstances, the common man is stu stood up. With what happens to him, Absolutely. his money is toggled uh, up. Yes. What happens? That's an important question to be answered. Yes. Anirudh, very quickly, last question to you. You know, it's very interesting that your, your, your reporter, when he went around, he insisted, he told everybody that I have this politician's money with me. That One second. The intent Politi disclosure was right up front. Okay. Nobody no. can... My, but my question is, if, it, if he had said it is not a politician's money, it is some real estate fellow's money, you think the re reaction would be different? No, no. At some places, he did say he was a real estate businessman. So it's not... Um, the majority of places he claimed to be fronting this imaginary politician. But some cases he pretended to be a businessman as well and do so the same reaction. I mean, this is, this is, I mean, they were now, just everybody, they are everybody. not worried about <laughs> whose money it is. So they, they are not, worried about they are even interested in the money. That's uh, it. Okay, Mr. Mr. Chandra, last words to you. Do you think that this expose will lead to some better yes. regulations in this country? Do you think there is a need for better regulation in this country? Do you think these these the, the people who are behind this definitely the top management no, of no, these banks need to be need to be uh, held to account? For what has happened? Definitely, it has exposed some system, some transactions, or some banks are circumventing some transactions and not reporting to FIU. Right. Okay. <laughs> if it comes to the knowledge of the FIU, okay, then sir. it cannot escape the attention of okay. law enforcement agencies. Okay. The key but word if it is, is not reported to yes, the key word FIU is, itself. Then the key word is reporting to the FIU and we can't expect the banks which are indulging in these things to report to the FIU. So that is where the problem lies. And Correct. I think we have we have come to the end of the show. Thanks to all my guests, Mr. Mr. Chandra, Mr. Hardyal Singh, uh, Anirudh Bahel and Aman Agarwal. Okay. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture, same time on Monday.